Jim Jerome! Caught by Boston College! I don't believe it! Oh. It's a touchdown! Whisper! Oh, it's a long way! Oh. They won it! On the duck! Oh, that's awesome, baby! With a count of the lane! The Bears have won! Oh, my God! The most amazing! Michelle Snow goes for the duck and she throws it down! Hello, I'm Chris Fowler for College Sports Century. As a freshman, he was the leading scorer on a Stanford team that climbed to the top of the polls. As a sophomore, he seized the school record for most three-point baskets in a career. As a junior, Casey Jacobson dreams of a national championship. And then, asked what he saw 10 years down the road, he smiled and replied, making a billion dollars in the NBA. He was kidding, sort of. Casey Jacobson looks like a choir boy, but plays like an assassin. He gives you that uh, California surfer boy look, but uh, he'll cut your heart out and put it right at center court. Casey Jacobson is the supreme competitor. He has uh, a cockiness about his game that I love. It's Iceman. It's, it's, it's Val Kilmer from Top Gun. You know, that's, that's his nickname, actually. Jacobson. Casey Jacobson was once described to me as John Havlicek of a different generation. He believes he can do whatever needs to be done to win the game. I've seen him shoot deep three-point shots. I've seen him ball fake, go right in the paint of a six-foot-ten guy and dunk. He's a tremendously versatile player. His competitive spirit is probably the greatest part of his personality. I think it might also be his weakness because he drives himself so hard. He's so hard on himself. He gets down on himself because he wants everything to be perfect. He wants everything to be right. Although that quest for perfection earned him All-American honors as a sophomore at Stanford, Casey Jacobson felt the pain of failure as a freshman. In the second round of the 2000 NCAA tournament, he shared a large slice of responsibility for an upset loss to North Carolina. He scored just five points. The North Carolina Tar Heels win it 60 to 53. I'll never forget that game against North Carolina. Casey puts a ton of pressure on himself, and uh, it almost seemed like the harder he tried, the more things went bad because he was trying to do so much. It was his 19th birthday, and he had the worst game of his career. He was two for 12. But this is a kid who had dreamed about being in the tournament all his life, had always envisioned himself on this giant stage, and I think he was overwhelmed. This, this team, this season, was something special. He ended up breaking down on camera. There's so much about him that people don't know. He tries so hard, you know, it's just, it was really a shame for, for him. He was just devastated. And he was devastated a month later, and two months later, and six months later. It was sort of a seminal moment in his career. He still talks about that game, how it drove him all summer. There's a side of him that says if he doesn't play well, or in his mind play well, there's gonna be a certain dissatisfaction with the performance. It's also what makes him good. But you don't want him to also be so hard on himself that there's not satisfaction. The pressure to perform began in childhood. On March 19, 1981, in Glendora, California, Casey was the third of four boys born to Becky and Von Jacobson. From an early age, Casey and his brothers were taught the game under the iron hand of their father, who was determined that basketball be the ticket to success. Vaughn has kind of a great Santini reputation. He had an idea when he had children that they were going to play basketball as he did, and they were going to get Division I scholarships. When you're in fifth or sixth grade, he'll approach son will sit down and they'll sort of have a talk about this is what we can do this is what basketball done for me and once you're in the program you can't get out you're in it Vaughn has opened himself up to a lot of criticism people have called him the Marv Marinovich of college basketball in the case of Marv Marinovich he basically took his son's childhood away 
You look at Todd now, and you see a guy who, in some ways, is still a child. I don't mind being compared to Marv Maranovich. You know, I took my oldest boy to him. I still do some of the things that Marv taught me. I'm not scared to train my kids when they're very young. It's not necessarily a healthy thing. I, don't, I wouldn't recommend it to people. The media can sometimes create a monster, and my dad kind of had a part in that. He wanted to portray himself as being, you know, this wizard pulling these strings. We didn't necessarily have a normal life, but we always had the free agency to do what we wanted. You have to understand Von Jacobson to understand the program. His father passed away when he was young. He really didn't have an identity. And his identity became basketball. It made him some money as a professional player in Europe. It really, in a sense, saved him from what could have been a very troubled childhood. And he saw the benefits of structure and work ethic. And that's what he wanted to pass down to his kids. And that's how the, the quote unquote program evolved. The program entails basketball to the exclusion of everything else. No ski trips, no parties, little social life, basketball, basketball, basketball. I didn't know exactly what his plan was and uh, what he was thinking about. I found myself feeling at times that these kids are so young, this is kind of hard on them. It was something that I had to become familiar with and kind of buy into. I don't think we should underestimate how extreme uh, what Vaughn's doing is. They say, well, the kids want to do it, and they have, but it requires a lot of sacrifice. He pushed us to our breaking point, and I cried a lot, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, I cried a lot. As a young kid, it's real hard. It's real hard to understand why you're doing things, why you're practicing so hard, why you're sacrificing going out with your buddies when you don't want to play basketball. He never had a girlfriend throughout high school because he thought maybe that would be a distraction. <laughs> At Glendora High School, Jacobson's 3,284 points made him the number two all-time scorer in California. But the better his son got, the harder Vaughn pushed. All of them talk about the car rides home. You go play for a traveling team or you go play for your high school team and Vaughn will come watch you play and then you'll drive home. They dreaded getting in that car. I spent many car rides home with my dad just bawling my eyes out. Really frustrated that my dad, that he would be that hard on me. That's very tough, very tough. If you have a very bad game, then you're gonna hear it the whole ride home. He would yell at me for not scoring 40. This would be after games where I scored 35, and my team won by, you know, 10 or 15 points. He never said, Casey, great job tonight. You're the best player. And I didn't understand that. And. You know, sometimes I still don't even understand it. One of the things that he was trying to do is teach us not to be satisfied with where we are. And I think Casey got the best of that. And he is very similar to my father. He has the same mentality of really never being satisfied. When Casey was in high school, we spent an awful lot of time trying to help him to not be so hard on himself. We would have a game Friday night, and Casey would have maybe 30 that night, but he wasn't happy with the way he shot. He would be in the gym the next morning at 6.30 to get his shot back or to get it where he wanted it. What happened as he got older, maybe his senior year, he had less to relate to with his friends because his goals were so high. He saw his way and he was the only one that could see that. He wanted so desperately to be so successful. In 1999, Jacobson accepted a scholarship from Stanford where for the first time he would experience life on his own.